Sure, Commander today, Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. Glad to have you all here with me today. Sending some love, some positive vibes your way, especially, hey, if you need it out there today. Today, we're going to talk about buffs, right? It's funny, back in 2023, I remember kind of even complaining a little bit about this cadence, this new announced buff schedule of champions in the game, right? Basically, two a month every month is what they committed to at least here in 2024 and now here you know eight months into the year almost nine months into the year now you know we've gotten 16 or so buffs right so they've actually delivered i thought it'd be nice to go back take a look at all of those buffs talk about where they knocked it out of the park and where they felt a little bit underwhelming but now that we have this collection of like in totality these 16 champions it's like man credit where credit is due this feels really good let's keep up two buffs a month forever let's keep it up forever and then maybe even add an epic sprinkle an epic or a rare in there and then we've done it we've hit that sweet spot where this game actually slowly evolves to be balanced and take into consideration power creep or in some cases champions that were just never good to begin with or never even serviceable in any area of the game to begin Remind with Remind me of something mitchell is the best art made by a million voices chiming in or one man with single vision Twinkle, twinkle, little star. And, and by the way, who's your number one, like, most wanted buff right now in the game? I think I would air along uh, all the Doom Tower Hard Champions stuff. I've talked about it like, ad nauseum here on the channel, but, man, like, these these Gomlocks of the world, I feel like there's still a lot of underwhelming ones. Obviously, Chromax, I mean, it's low-hanging fruit here. I mean, these are easy buffs. Bring it down to a three-turn, stuff like that, you know? So I think that would be a great idea as a starting place, but is there one particular champion that you guys think just does not feel a legendary that you would be super bummed out to pull from a legendary or pull from a sacred shard for that matter or any shard resetting your mercy let me know who that champion would be for you guys i've given her a ton of hate but I still think that Adolin's one of the worst out there. I know she has some utility. I know. I realize that. Uh, but, yeah, I think she could use a buff. But there's a lot of them. There's, frankly, a lot of them. I've been calling for a Raz and Scarhide buff. This dude still is a legit awesome champion who's a permanent fusion in the game, right? But, man, the 91 speed just really bothers me. Low and steady wins the race. You're only competing with yourself. You can go in there and touch that up a little bit. Maybe bring this down from a seven-turn cooldown, right? A permanent fusion ought to be, you know, worth going for and he's, he's he's borderline right now i still think he's worth going for to be fair it's a great a2 triple hitter on the a1 but man he, he's not the same rosin that he was back in the day right so anyway let's talk about all the buffs and let's quickly grade them all right so i actually want to show some of my most recent faves in the background on a really quick run all together built out in the real gear that i'm rocking we have Siegfried, we have claydna we have noble we have lady of irith and we have hacker and smash lord right so I really like all of these buffs, maybe with the exception of Noble. I want to actually grade all the buffs too. So let's start with Lady of Irith. I actually wanted to make, the, the whole idea behind this video was, originally, I was just going to do a Lady of Irith video, and then I thought to myself, probably the, not that many of my viewers actually have her to begin with. Guys, that is so thoughtful. But she really, really sucked. This is the most recent buff. And they went in there and they gave her such a great addition to her A3 ability, right? It's a strength, a big version of strength, and on a 3-2 turn cooldown and a continuous heal on a three turn cooldown and now on a three turn cooldown she reduces the cooldown of all ally skills by one turn on that same ability so that was a really really solid buff right that wasn't all they did to her but that made her from a super underwhelming healer kind of very mediocre less than that healer that you never want to pull she very, felt very epic like to now a really serviceable healer and champion that you can use you know in hydra or basically anywhere in the game what what this allows her to do let me just start with lady of irith right uh Starting with Lady, this allows you to basically, and I have her right now in Relentless and Impulse. Of course, six or nine piece protection would be the best way to go in a lot of situations like Hydra. But I want her to take extra turns because I want her to get back to this A3 again. Strengthen, continuous heal, and decrease the cooldown of all ally skills except this champion by one turn on a three turn cooldown. This allows you to basically make the uptime of your debuffs 
continuous, constant, and buffs for that matter, right? Uh, so, in get not to mention getting back to your nuker's best abilities even faster, right? So it's even more powerful than a you know increased duration of all ally debuffs and increased duration of all ally or enemy debuffs and ally buffs. You guys know what I'm saying, right? Uh, it's even better than that. Really, really good buff. They also went in and fixed up her A2 a little bit, made it a lot better. On the A1, she instantly activates a random continuous heal on all allies with less than 85% HP. That's not a very high threshold to get to. She also has a, a shield on the ally with lowest HP. She's great survivability, great kind of surplus heal here on the A2, and then a, a very nice A3. So she went from, gosh, one of the very worst legendaries to a very serviceable legendary. I give it an A plus grading on the buff, right? These are not champion grades, these are the value of the buff. Let's talk about Noble, because we just saw him, right? Man, this is Noble's second or third buff, and I really hate to say it, because I put him in really solid gear, you know? Uh, cruel, Savage, ignore all the defense that we can. They went in here, they reworked his A3. He's now stealing 50% of target's turn meter on an AoE. That sounds nasty. He has a two-turn cooldown with a turn meter fill, ignoring 30% of defense that actually does smack. That's nasty, too. And I was hopeful. I was hopeful for something on Noble. Unfortunately, his best service, I think after testing him a lot, let me just run him really quick here. After testing this dude a lot, I hate to say it, but Noble, he's still his best utility, I feel like is gonna be Empowering Ninja, man. It sucks, because I want this dude to be bad so badly, so much, right? But he's just, he's just, I mean, he hits decently hard now, which is cool, uh, but that's that's it you know he has a little bit of fear true fear synergy which isn't really used right now in the game i think that if there's something missing in the game right now it's it's some viability to fear and true fear champions right anyway here's his a3 ability right it's not that hard hitting right uh his a2 the two turn cooldown ignore defense actually is hard hitting but you know, single target damage dealers. They're a dime a dozen, you know? Here's this A2, uh, UDK, we're talking about 123,000 damage, yet unkillable, but I mean, that's what we're looking at on Noble. So this is Noble's, I think, again, his second or third buff now, and he's still not, I, I can't in good consciousness say he's a good champion, right? He could be decent in wave content or beginner arena champion like this. It's a nice, uh, I love the, the go to the A2, three steal that turn meter go to the a2 kill somebody he needs an extra turn after that a2 or something like that if he kills an enemy so he can start chaining skills together make him a little bit more intriguing overall they're trying on noble so i can't fault him for that but i'm going to give the buff a uh maybe a c plus you know how quickly poor grades are forgotten in the shadow of power and wealth is well you can say this about all these champions he's better than he was before which is great right that's that's the whole purpose of buffs so at the end of the day can't complain too much but i I don't think they knocked it out of the park yet with Noble in, in terms of just giving him any area in the game where he can be, you know, viable, where he can really help your account. Uh, Hacker and Smash Lord, man, they did a great job on this dude. He's really good now. They changed his A3. He's not sacrificing all his HP. It's just a shield based on damage dealt, and it actually deals a decent amount of damage for an HP-based ability. Thus, the shield is pretty solid. It's a four-turn cooldown. It's not a great ability, but this cleanse all of a sudden becomes one of the better cleanses out there in the entire game on Hackorn. Now that they brought it to a three turn cooldown, doesn't even need to be booked. It's a cleanse with block debuffs for two turns and a really solid heal with extra heal for each debuff removed. This is better than, you know, Pythion's A2 now because the heal is a little bit better. Uh, insanely good cleanse, insanely good cleanse. I ranked the top 20 cleansers uh, in a recent video and he was definitely on the list. I forgot exactly what number he was, but maybe a little bit one dimensional outside this skill. But man, I mean, that's a great, great cleanse ability now. So I'm going to give it an A plus on that buff. I've been asking for a Hackhorn Smash Lord buff for a long time, and they really nailed it there. All right, next up is going to be Kladna. So Kladna is a Void Legendary, and they went in, they did a big rework. They touched up all of her skills. She was meh, just very underwhelming to me. And now I think they did a heck of a job again. She's got to sleep on the A1, 100%. Fantastic. It can be a sand devil sleeper. She has a decreased speed, 
and a leech on all enemies, restoring uh, H max HP and healing all allies. So even, you know, beyond the Sand Devil, this is a very great ability even for Hydra on a three turn cooldown, decrease speed and leech, two of the most important, depending on what you need, but especially decrease speed and leech. I always look for leech if I can find it in Hydra. And then on the A3, she has block debuffs, a full cleanse and a revive on death. It used to be no cleanse, just block debuffs and a revive. Now she got the block debuffs, the revive and the cleanse on a three turn cooldown. They changed her passive, a chance in completely blocking incoming damage. It used to be on herself, but she was usually the tankiest on the team. It made no sense. Now it's on a random ally occurs once per turn. A lot more utility out of that too. Again, A on the buff, A plus. I think they did a great job with Claydna. I know. Now, I am kind of stack. I didn't do this on purpose, but I'm stacking the really good grades at the top of the video here. Unfortunately, it's not always this good, but it's going to continue. Siegfried and the Nephilim, one of the most underwhelming mythical champions that you never want to pull. Uh, when he was introduced to the game, the first mythical champion highlighted by Raid Shadow Legends, a little trivia for you guys. Don't talk shit about me. This guy's now the best attack-based nuker, certainly in the conversation inside all of Raid Shadow Legends. He does seer-like damage to waves with the rage of Nephilim, uh, never mind inside the arena. Uh, they just boosted all his multipliers. He's a great, great nuker. Again, one of the best in the game now, which is what you want when you pull a freaking mythical champion. A plus to the buff. Great buff. And this one, I'll eat crow a little bit on Siegfried 2 because I'm like, they need to just make it so he can change abilities to be a reviver. But I actually like the way he is now. I think that now that he's the best damage dealer in the game on the, on the base form that makes up a lot and he just gives him extra utility the fact that he can morph into a reviver if you need him uh or if you kill him you know uh last all right guys so moving on two of my favorites of the year so far this first one i think players are still sleeping on in a big big way and it's the cow great hoof laratia they did a hell of a job with this buff guys Bear with me. Hear me out on this one. She's actually really solid. Even in the event dungeon, she's really solid now. Uh, she They added turn meter uh, fill on the A1, conditional on her stealing buffs, which she can do on each hit. On the A2, this was a big, big buff. They added decreased accuracy to the decreased resistance, and then they added this really insane turn meter fill mechanic. In PvE content, if you again go against five mobs and you land the two debuffs on everybody, you can get 100% turn meter fill. Fills this champion's turn meter by 10% for each debuff placed by this skill. So again, two times five enemies, 100% turn meter fill. It might not land on all enemies, but it's still a very significant turn meter fill. Now, this is really important, and we'll get to it when we, when we come to the conclusion of our kit, right? On the A3, she has another three-turn cooldown, a block debuffs. They added an increased accuracy to this as well, and a turn meter fill of all allies by 20%. Now, you add that to the hoof beats passive. Fills this champion's turn meter by 5% each time an ally buff is removed, transferred, stolen or expires well they buffed this indirectly by adding another buff to the a3 so what does this all amount to it basically allows her with all this turn meter fill from the passive from the extra buff added into the extra turn meter on the a2 it allows her to keep up decrease resistance decrease accuracy block debuffs and increase accuracy with basically zero downtime right Obviously, it's going to change a little bit depending on affinity and where you are, but potentially, especially in wave content, right? Or against the event dungeon where there's four ads, right? There's four mobs on top of Odin. It allows her to keep these up all the time because she's getting so much turn meter fill, right? It's a really, really diverse and unique kit that is, is actually a lot better than I think people recognize. But hopefully that makes sense to you guys. She's just getting so much turn meter fill that she's able to keep the buffs up on all allies and the debuffs up on all enemies. And they're really nice sets of debuffs and buffs to have. Uh, really solid champion now. I give an A plus to this buff. All right, let's move on to Jingwan. The worst Void Legendary in the game. And now, not the best, 
but really solid. They changed them. I, if we go to the text here, uh, the, the official text when they buffed Jingwan, they basically said, you know, what their thought process was. With the upcoming changes, Jingwan's role will shift from an HP tank towards more of a supporting type of champion. His reworked kit will grant Jingwan a lot. Check it out. More control over his enemies. A chance to land a stun. An additional AoE attack to pr that prolongs debuffs, so debuff extension. A chance to remove enemy buffs. And finally, more useful debuffs in his arsenal. That is a heck of a lot to add to one champion in one buff, right? Uh, he already has that passive where he can he's immune to CC and he can cleanse a CC on a four-turn cooldown from allies. Really solid. It is a bummer that it's a four-turn cooldown, but it's still very powerful, right? Uh, on his A1, they added this stun. He also transfers all debuffs from this champion to the target. Exceptionally good in Dragon uh, uh, Dragon Hard. Getting all those poisons from him right back to the dragon. Perfect. Uh, Compound Calamity is now an AoE. It increases the duration of all, uh, all debuffs on all enemies, plus a block active skills, plus a block buffs. What a great control neutralizer there on an AoE on a three-turn cooldown now. This is so much better than the first version that we got of Jingwan is not even comparable and then an AoE times two on the A3 first hit 100% chance when booked void affinity of removing all buffs second hit decreased accuracy and a decreased crit damage and a big version of strengthen all on one skill it's a four turn cooldown but it's still a lot that he's bringing to the table now man Jingwan is 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 who went from again just a like crap 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 void legendary that you never want to pull to now a champion like we said about almost all these champions so far a champion that a lot of players are still vastly underrating after this buff i give the buff an a all right now we're going to move into a little bit earlier in the year queen ava queen ava the campaign farmer extraordinaire but when you pull a legendary champion you don't want their only claim to fame to be campaign farming and they did a heck of a good job on queen ava oh, my bad the queen of the energy drain is the campaign farming ability but they went in here with ancient curse it's a really hard hitting potentially ignore a hundred percent defense with helm smasher and savage or lethal gear and it has the block revive she is a massive threat not only because of this skill getting a, a great uh, buff excuse me but also it's a two-time hitter block revive which allows you to circumvent a udk right so really really useful she becomes one of the more powerful block revive champions in the game a on that buff as well all right now we go to manaya manaya was an interesting one i always felt like she was Pretty dang underwhelming uh, when it came to really one of the worst legendaries, honestly. I love that she's a companion champion with Coronar. She gets a bit better with Coronar on the on the team as well. They went in here and they changed her. They made her a lot more valuable, right? She has a heal reduction and a leech on all enemies on a three-turn cooldown, which is pretty, pretty nice. She has a, it used to be a single target heal here. So, you know, at least we have the ally with lowest HP. It's kind of a weird move when you look at it. Uh, then we have an AoE heal with a block debuffs on all allies for two turns. This is on a four-turn cooldown. They totally reworked her kit. If the champion is fully healed has a shield on them uh it's a good heal block debuffs is nice it's still a four turn cooldown i still think she's a mid you know a support legendary champion she's not absolute trash but uh yeah i, I, don't, I don't absolutely love her i think they could have gone even a little bit further with making this a three turn cooldown it wouldn't have made her broken or anything like that that's what i would have loved to see however you know she's better than she was i'll give it a c a c on the buff to manaya holstering time sacred order holstering i love the smoke monster i love holstering i love his whole aesthetic he's a cool champion that not a lot of people like uh they took out a little bit of the rng uh from this champion which is nice this used to be three times at random now it's just three times they mixed they messed with his abilities a little bit they made him quite frankly better the only four time at random now is this a3 they even did things like adding a uh 
where they add the decreased speed to the A3 ability and then give him extra synergy where he's putting uh, veils on himself or perfect veils when he's attacking an enemy under hex when they're under the decreased speed debuff. So he has more utility, a little bit more damage now, a little bit more dependability. It, and again, they made him from random targets on his A1, his A2 to single targets. He's still a very underrated single target damage dealer and a hex supplier. However, you know, outside of maybe Fire Knight or a Clan Boss, he's a little bit niche still. I will say though, I have seen some pretty crazy things from holstering teams in Hydra Clan Boss in terms of damage. That being said though, uh, it's it's not he's not a meta champion in Hydra, but if you put good enough gear on him, which is a story of a lot of champions out there, he can definitely put out some nice numbers, especially from a single target nuker. All right, this next one is the one that honestly, as you can see, the only champion on the list I don't have. So I don't have any firsthand experience with Vitreous the Anointed. All I know is for a champion with 1707, it's the tale as old as time here in Raid Shadow Legends. With a champion with that high of a base attack, he didn't hit hard. I saw all the play tests and it was awful. They went in there. They tried to add some damage to his kit. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, I think they added ignore defense as well. I can't sit here and say that he's a lot better. I still don't hear amazing things about Vitreous the Anointed. So I'm going to say a TBD. I would love to hear from you guys if you have this dude, what you think of the buff. On paper, I mean, again, obviously it's better, right? It was clearly a buff. So he's better than he was in that regard as a success. Beyond that, though, I can't speak to this guy again. The only guy I don't have I don't love the conditionality in his kit but you guys let me know maybe I'm sleeping on him I'll give it a TBD or uh, can't assess uh, but hey a buff is a buff at the end of the day next up is going to be little miss Annie oh the freakiest legendary in the game uh, I love LMA I love the aesthetic it's almost Halloween here only a couple months away guys uh, right uh, I said yeah yeah only a couple months away it's crazy man it doesn't feel like that I can't wait to see the Halloween champions this year I hope they're good I hope they're good don't screw this up. Bring back the miscreated monster, the Harvest Jacks, the Madam Ceres update. Those were the hollow. No, no mass fear monger. <laughs> Anyway, I hope we get a good legendary for Halloween. LMA, or Rodos and Sifi, for that matter, right? Some really good Halloween champions out there in the years past. Playdate, they came in and they changed a lot on LMA, right? They uh, they, they made the ignore defense unconditional, so it's just doing it. Last time it was uh, it was like if she was under a shield or something like that. Uh, they, they On the A2, the same thing, right? Ignoring 25% uh, of target's defense. Uh, they basically gave her more damage pretty much everywhere. They added a decreased defense to her A1 on top of the heal reduction so now she can be a really dependable you know debuffer off of her a1 ability on a triple hitter this is a 75 percent chance on each hit to place a big version of heal, uh, decreased defense and heal reduction great for fire knight great for damage anywhere just insane damage right they added a place to revive on death buff on this champion for two turns if she kills an enemy on the play date ability play date can absolutely smack by the way they also went in here i i forgot i think oh they changed the see the 10 percent sense each hit has a 50% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 10%. It used to be a 5%, right? So they doubled the turn meter decrease that she has on each hit. They also came in here, each uh, also heals the champion by 10% of the damage inflicted when attacking enemies under the two debuffs that she brings on her A1. Well, that used to be 5%. So they really added a lot of survivability, which is necessary because she has a, such a low base stats, especially her defense at 793. So a great buff to LMA. Uh, I already loved LMA. I was kind of surprised that they buffed her, but at the same time, she's a Void Legendary she should be very good so i like the buff i will give it a i'll give it a b i'll give it a b on little miss annie all right next up guys is going to be supreme ethel oof oof supreme ethel i remember i pulled her in a shard opening video and i was like why do people hate her so much man She's not that bad at all. No, they're jealous. They are jealous. She has an extra turn ability. They added the increased accuracy to this extra turn ability on her buff, uh, which is really helpful because we want accuracy in her kit. She brings freeze, right? So an AOE, 100% freeze, ignoring strengthen, ally protect, unkillable, uh, as well as 20% of the target's defense on enemies under said freeze. I mean, man, on paper, this looks really, really good. They went in there. They buffed a lot in her kit. Uh, overall, I think it was a great buff to Supreme Aethel. However, with all that said, I remember I was so excited excited to try her out after the buff and i was like eh, damage is still meh you know and when you think about it even though she has the aoe freeze which is very nice her kit is still 
all around damage. It's all about damage. Uh, they did go in there and they buffed her damage multipliers, right? I think it was, uh, well, I have it written down, so I don't think I know. I suffer from short-term memory loss. It was a three, uh, a 3.8, I'm sorry, a 3.8 to a 4.3 AOE. They added the ignore defense as well. I mean, it's really, really solid under freeze. Conditional, but still nice to add. As I said, they added the increased accuracy to allow you to build her with more attack. And it really, this ability here, you know, it really allows you to focus on damage, 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 and they've got everything else on her, you know? Uh, a lot of attack, uh, and plus that shield is based on attack, and the shield happens after the increased attack goes on her. Man, there's a lot to love about, about her kit, but at the end of the day, the damage still just isn't all there compared to other void legendaries or even non-void legendaries there is an attack a chance to attack all enemies under freeze on the a1 which you know in, in an escalation on attack her kit reads so nice just i haven't seen the damage personally to justify it i wish they had upped the multipliers maybe even a little bit more am i being too greedy a 4.3 is not bad for an aoe at almost 1600 base attack I don't know. You guys let me know if you disagree, but I'm going to give the buff a uh, a B. Uh, next up, these are the first two of the year, guys. Uh, Angar. Angar, you guys know how much I hated this dude for so long, man. He was the worst Void Legendary, I think. And now I think they did a hell of a job with this buff. I know he's still not everybody's favorite, but he has an AoE Provoke now. He used to be single target. He has an AoE two-term Provoke, right? Has a 75% chance to place a Provoke debuff for two turns on an AoE. 75% isn't 100, but a 75% two-turn provoke on a three-turn cooldown, that is the nastiest provoke in the game outside Archer Queens, and hers only works for two turns against bosses. So really, when you look at it, he also brings a counterattack on himself, leading to extra hits on enemies with provokes, which they do a lot. So I think that this guy, for an AoE or a single target provoker, he's really up there now with that two-turn potential on his A2. Again, Molly Tankard has a 50% chance of doing it uh there's a few we have uh Allah's a sun bear but it's a single target two turn we have umbral in stone skin can do a two turn on a five turn cooldown uh so but there's my point is there's very limited options and a two turn revoke is super powerful because you can't cleanse it off too right like cleanser can't go because they can't cleanse so they're, they're provoked so it has a lot of utility even outside hydra in obvious situations i'll give this buff a b plus still a very one dimensional void legendary but that one dimension is pretty solid now. All right, last is gonna be Fortis. Oh, Fortis. I was so excited when they buffed this guy. And they did a pretty good job. They went in and they just gave him a damage buff, right? They, won, they added one defense multiplier uh, and onto this Astral Terror's secret skill. Problem is, is like I said earlier, when we're talking about Noble, fear and true fear, it's just, it's a very difficult with stone skin and polymorph. It's very challenging and there's no PVE area that's built around fear or true fear, right? It's not like hex that has like obvious application, universal, almost everywhere. Fear can't be used against bosses. So you're immediately restricted to wave content. When we talk about the most difficult wave content in the game, we're talking about Centranos or very difficult secret rooms, Soul Cross, right? And unfortunately in that content, stun is just so far superior to fear and true fear, that everybody just goes with stun sets, right? So fear and true fear, you know, it, it, it needs, outside of the head of torment, <laughs> when I don't wanna deal with it being better, but it needs some more utility in the game. I would love to see, again, a dungeon or bosses where fear and true fear are way more effective, you know? Uh, so there it is, guys. Fortis, I mean, they upped his damage, but he's still overall kind of an underwhelming Void Legendary. I don't think he's, he's who you want to see coming out of your Void Shard, resetting your Mercy on a Fortis, unfortunately. I wish they went even bigger on this ability because fear and true fear are so niche that, you know, he, and it's a secret skill that it deserves to be a very hard hitter. The counter argument to that devil's advocate would be, well, if a day comes along where fear and true fear are super strong, then having him so broken would be almost exploitive, 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 exploit, exploit, exploitive, exploitive.
would be almost bad for the game. Uh, but I don't buy that argument. It's a bad devil's advocate. Just make him good right now. How about that? <laughs> so anyway, guys, that's going to do it for the buffs of 2024. Do you agree with my assessments? Do you disagree? I would still especially love to know if you have strong thoughts on, you know, a couple of the champions that was a little bit less familiar with, such as Virtuous or Vitruous, the, uh, the Anointed, and maybe even the Supreme Aethel. Let me know in the comments below, guys. And don't forget, let me know who you want to see buffed the most in the game. Thank you for watching. And as always, take care, guys.